Welcome back to The Mental Game. I'm your host, Brandon Seho, and this week's guest is Cincinnati Reds outfielder Jake Fraley, and this was an awesome conversation. In this episode, Jake talks about his MLB career, his love for the game, but also his personal, emotional struggles throughout his career, including injuries that actually almost made him quit baseball this past season. All of that and much, much more coming up in this episode. But before we get started, let's kick things off with this week's Mental Health Tip of the Week, powered by 1 in 5 and is all about knowing that it is okay to not be okay. Struggling with mental health can be very alienating. You may feel alone and that you're the only person in the world struggling, but you have to remember that this isn't true. Whether it is a short-term or long-term condition, one in five people struggle with mental health in some way. Mental health manifests differently in everyone, so even if someone doesn't seem like they are struggling on the surface, they could be deep down. Therefore, it's important to remind yourself you are not alone in your struggles. We must destigmatize our thoughts about mental health because it is okay to not be okay. Life has many ups and downs, but what matters is how you persevere through the low points and enjoy the high ones. And if you or someone you know needs help finding a therapist or any mental health resources, go ahead and scan the QR code in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. It'll be up the entire episode, and it'll take you directly to 1 in 5's homepage, where their mission is to prevent suicide by stopping the stigma and starting the conversation. And now it is time for this awesome conversation with Red's outfielder, Jake Fraley. Welcome into the mental game here at Great American Ballpark with Reds outfielder Jake Fraley. Jake, I appreciate you doing this oh, with me, man. Absolutely. First thing I ask everyone here on the mental game is what does mental health mean to you and how has it evolved, you know, over your life where you've been able to use it as a tool for yourself? Uh, honestly, mental health wasn't really much of anything to me um, up until just a couple months ago, uh, if I'm being completely honest. Mm -hmm. it's. And I, I'm not saying that it's not something that is is uh, that wasn't. I was aware of it, right? I understand that, you know, especially when it comes to you know trying to be a performer in an elite sport, yeah, um, night in and night out. I understand that there's a mental side to it, right? It's not just the physical side. Um, but for me, it wasn't something that was focused on. I, I never put any type of thought or effort into understanding, you know, gaining knowledge on mm -hmm. the mental side. Um, it was more kind of like that road of, and you hear it all the time in sports, uh, from the performance side, from athletes that it's almost like you feel like if you need help on the mental side, you're almost weak. Right. Um, and that was kind of the aspect that I took from it. So it was almost, um, a side of me that I kind of shuttered down, mm -hmm. um, shied away and even shied away from the point of, you know, a lot of those emotions and thoughts and feelings away from my wife. Um, and so, you know, for me, it, it's, it's something that has just become very new to me over the last couple mm -hmm. months. Um, and very quickly understanding that it is the most important aspect sure. of not only from the uh, performance side of my job, um, but also every aspect of my life from right. being a father to a husband to a friend to a son, um, all of it. You talk about learning about it recently. I, I think you talked about it with Jim Day on Valley Sports Ohio after a game when you went through your injuries this year yeah. and you're on the injured list. Where did that kind of hit you and did it hit you hard? Did you have dark days where you first realized like my mental game's not good? Yeah, um, no, absolutely. Very dark days. Uh, and it kind of started last um, last season. Um, so I, I, I went through 2019 had probably one of the best seasons I've had in professional baseball in mm -hmm. 2019. I got to the big leagues. Um, so finally cracked that door. Um, and then 2020 came around and obviously 2020 was, uh, you know, a tough year for everybody. Right. Um, especially from the sports world, a lot of people were kind of left behind um, uh, with just the way that the season was, right? It was a short mm -hmm. season. There was a lot of, you know, th untangible things that nobody had any idea was going to happen. So unfortunately, there was a lot of, you know, it affected a lot of people's careers. Um, and so for me, 2020 was a tough year in the fact that um, 
I had uh, not given a, an opportunity to be in the big leagues that year. Um, I think I ended up getting like a week, which prorated into like a month and a half if right. it was a regular year. Um, so I spent the majority of that year down at the alt site where there was no season. It, yeah. it was tough. Um, and then fast forward to last year in 20, um, 2021, you know, consider my rookie season and played very well the first half with Seattle. I was an everyday guy for them. Um, and then we called up uh, one of the top prospects with um, with us at the time, Jared Kelnick, um, more than deserving, phenomenal. I'm very close to him, a very yeah. close friend of mine. Um, so nothing against Jared. I mean, he's a phenomenal baseball player. He deserved it. Um, and so when we called him up, I was pushed to the platoon um, and not playing every day for the second half. And that was kind of the first time in my career that I've gone through not you know being an everyday player and then having to do that in the big leagues and then having to try to pinch hit in the big leagues, yeah. um, which is, I I mean, hard, incredibly yeah. hard. Um, there's a reason why, you know, you don't see utility guys or not utility guys, uh, bench guys getting paid, you know, in the game anymore like they used to. Right, it's so difficult. Because it's such a difficult task and you kind of interchange different guys and see mm -hmm. what works, what doesn't, right? So um, a lot of new things for me. And then on top of that, um, I had a very serious hamstring injury. So I broke uh, uh, my first opening day roster coming into 2021. Yeah. Um, had a good spring training, finished strong, made the opening day roster. I was in, uh, oh, in the opening day lineup. Um, and then uh, four, four or five days later into the season, tore my hamstring. Jeez. Um, so it was a really bad tear. It was a, a grade two tear, borderline grade three. Um, and so uh, that was kind of the start of the gut punches I just started getting. Right. I worked my way back from that. Um, and then, like I said, ended up playing really well and then went through the whole second half. Um, you know, I had a couple other, like, little tiny things. I went to go rob a baseball over the fence against Houston and subluxed my shoulder. Um, wanted to play through it, but for whatever reason, the way Seattle wanted to play it out because they needed an extra pitcher, I was forced to go on the 10-day. So that yeah. sucked, even though I felt like I could still finish the year. It was toward the end of the year. Yeah. Um, but... Anyway, I ended up finishing that year the last couple of weeks very strong going into the offseason um, and then ended up getting traded here for two All-Stars, which was a huge thing. Um, you know, it's a big deal anytime right. you get yeah. traded for guys like that. Um, a team that wanted me, um, had a phenomenal spring training, uh, played the first month of the season, was a little bit off going into the year, but, you know, not, not a very big deal. It's a long season, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody has their little, you know, to start the year off a little slow. Um, and I started getting knee pain. Um, so I started, uh, I was playing through like two weeks of knee pain where it just got progressively so bad to where I couldn't even get into a sprint without limping and we couldn't figure out what it was. Um, and so I ended up deciding, making the choice after playing on it for two weeks, you know, I'm going to go on the IL. I'm going to try to get this thing figured out. Cause I've never had knee sure. pain before. And it was, I mean, it was bad to the point where like, if, uh, if I tried to walk like 20, 30 feet, by the time I got there, I was like, had to like get off my like pressure oh, off of my yeah, leg. I, I couldn't figure it out. Um, and so get back from that rehab and I'm one game away from coming back from my rehab assignment and I hit a base hit up the middle on my last game of my rehab assignment um, base hit up the middle hit first base nothing unusual hit first base sharp pain through my foot and so I'm like there's no way like this is like I, there's no, I'm gonna play through this game I had three more innings left I was like I'm gonna ignore this so I get through the three game or the three innings and you know I have the adrenaline going it hurt yeah um, and through it. exactly and so I'm like trying to forget about it. I'm like there's no way like something happened again and so three uh, the next morning, woke up and couldn't couldn't move my my big toe. It was swollen and ended up getting X-rays and MRIs and come to find out I had a uh, fracture my sesamoid bone in my foot. And this yeah. is actually the second time I fractured it in 2017, doing the same thing, just hitting first base. So second time fracturing it. So at that point was a point where after all of that kind of corresponding together in my brain, um, as kind of like a one two three punch knockout, right. um, I was I was at the point of like I just. I didn't know how to get back up. Yeah. Um, I, would, I had conversations with my wife, my father of just like, I just, I don't know how to like psych myself into like, okay, let's get through this. Let's get back up and we're going to get back on the horse and mm -hmm. get going again. Like, I just felt like at this point, there's so many things that are going, you know, not going my way. And again, things that are out of my control. Sure. Um, and there's a part of my brain that understood that, you know, it's not my fault. It's just a nature of the game, it's right? It's life perfect it's life it's not just sports it's life and but I just couldn't get myself mentally to be able to like okay let's get back on the horse let's get back up and so I called my agent um uh, Matt Ricardo um with CAA he's a, a great guy he's yeah awesome um and I started venting to him about it um and he brought up the idea of uh maybe getting some professional help mm -hmm. and my initial thought 
like I said in the beginning, was why the heck do I need professional help? Like, I'm a professional athlete. Right. I'm at the highest aspect of my game. Can't go any higher than the big leagues, right? Right. Um, and I'm here. I'm doing it. But why do I need help? Yeah. Like, I can find a way to get through it. And got off the phone with him, and he's like, just tell me what you think after a day or two of thinking about it, and we'll go from there. And he gave me the guy's name, so his name was Brian Kane. Um, and he's like, we've done a lot of work with him. He's worked with a few of our uh, athletes within the agency. Mm -hmm. um, one of the main guys being Corbin Burns, okay, completely yeah. turned his career around. Sure. Um, he was, uh, after his rookie year in 2018, had a hard time. Um, was one of the worst pitchers in baseball. They actually, the Brewers sent him back to Arizona. Didn't even send him, didn't even option him down. Yeah, sent him back to Arizona. To said, hey, like, let's, you need to figure something out. And so that was when he started working with Brian. But, you know, turned his career around. He's Cy Young, one of the best pitchers in baseball now. Yeah. Um, so once I started hearing about that, I was like, you know what? Like, there might be some, there might be something to this. Yeah, sure. Um, and at this point, I had already been working with Vanessa, our uh, in-house mm -hmm. um, mental uh, coach. Yeah. So, and she's been, she was awesome. She, she kind of got like my feet rolling a little bit with um, working on a few like, uh, you know, very practical kind of exercises and things that I could incorporate into my routine at that time. Yeah. Um, to kind of help me kind of start thinking about this mm -hmm. mental stuff. Um, so she was kind of the one that kickstarted it. And once I started sitting, once I sat down with Brian, I was like, I got, I remember getting off the phone FaceTime with Brian and I was, uh, before we even finished, um, we were, he was getting ready. He was like, Hey, you know, so give me like a day or two. I'm like, no, I'm in. I was like, I want to do this. I was like, I, I, I don't care how much it costs. I don't care what it takes. I was like, I want I want to do this. And so um, I hired Brian on, and it was the best decision that I ever made. I mean, it it changed my life. Well, so is he a mental coach, therapist? Yeah. So he 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 uh, take me through kind of what he did for you. And yeah. How you guys he, so got he's started. a. I think he considers himself as like a mental performance coach. Okay. Um, so it's everything from the mental side, psychi. I mean, whatever terminology you want to put on it. Yeah. Um, but he's been around for uh, for 25, 30 years within the sports world. Mm -hmm. um, he, one of his big guys that he was. So he, uh, I don't know if you follow UFC, but uh, a little bit. Yeah. George St. Pierre. Okay. Yep. Um, so one of the greatest fighters right. of all time, considered by most people within yeah. the sport. Um, so he actually worked with GSP um, through the majority of his oh, wow. uh, fight career, his Hall of Fame career. Um, uh, it was actually after he lost his first. Uh, um, title fight um, I don't remember who it was but after he lost after GSP lost that first title fight he reached out to Brian and then that was when they started working yeah. he worked with Brian for the rest of his career oh, wow. um, so that was a hu another huge one where I was like I mean, it's George St. Pierre. If yeah. And you're talking about fighting. Right. Like, that's the most a intense, whole manly different thing where you don't game. need help, don't need. I mean, you're I, supposed to be a tough guy. Getting yeah. into a, a ring and having to fight, you right. know, these type of people. And not only that, but for, you know, he, I mean, he's one of the best, again, one yeah, of the best of all time. Tens, and he, hundreds of millions of dollars. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, I was like, there's something to this. I was like, that guy, that guy hired Brian and had him for his whole career. There's something to this. And that, yeah. that was another reason why I was like, you know what, I'm going to give this a try. Um, so, you know, he considers himself the mental performance coach. And he works with, again, everything from, uh, he works with a lot of universities from team aspects coming sure. in and working with teams um, all through college. Um, and then a lot of baseball um, as well. Um, a lot of high school guys. Uh, and he basically just, I mean, he breaks down everything that you need to know from the mental side, um, everything that encompasses um, these guys that you see within all of these each individual sports, mm -hmm. um, the best of the best and why right. they're the best of the best. Because if you look at each and every one of these individual guys that are superstars within their sports, they all do things very similarly yeah. and they all do things from the mental side almost exact mm -hmm. um, because and what I'm realizing now after, you know, doing this for months and months now, you know, a good chunk of time and not only that, but being able to put it into action, right. I've been playing for, you know, months now, yeah. um, is that, uh, the reason why these guys are so consistent in what they do is because they're doing, and, and whether they know it or not, they're doing it. Yeah. Um, because, uh, in order to be successful at these sports that are high performance, um, night in and night out, mm -hmm. um, you can't succeed without it. Yeah. And I realized that through not only struggles from the performance side, but also obviously the big factor for me was the injury side. Right. Um, and now that I'm able to be, you know, putting this into action for months and months now, um, night in and night out, I'm realizing how much it not only affects um, the way that your body is kind of surfacing through mm -hmm. all of the stress that the game goes through, which a mental side is a big side of that, right. um, but also obviously from the performance side. We'll turn the page in just a sec to what has happened since then. But when you bring 
Brian on and you guys start working together and he's coaching you up on different mental things and you're learning experience stuff. What were some of those dark days? Did you have nights where you couldn't sleep? Were there times where you're oh. talking with your wife and just, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. I mean, because you and I were talking about this a little bit before about my story, you know, yeah. mine, mine was pretty severe. I was in a deep, dark place for a couple of years. I was suicidal and I had to, you know, seek professional help too. Absolutely. And not everybody's story is that deep and people mm -hmm. watching this series are going to find that. But for you, what were those dark days like? Yeah, my dark days were, um, and I, I touched on it very briefly with um, just feeling like I couldn't get back up or get back on the horse. It was almost like I was like losing my love for the sport that I had passion for, right? My job, and it was, you know, this is what provides for my family. Right. Um, and it's crazy to think from just in, in honing in on this point before I get into the next couple of points of, of what it was like for me. It's crazy because like, your brain like I understand that this is what provides for my family I understand right. that like the Lord has blessed me with gifts to be able to do these things at mm -hmm. a high elite level and not only that but like it's no it's no secret like we get paid very well to do this job sure um, because yeah. it is extremely hard and there are very few people in this world that are able to do it at this elite level right and I understand that I have the capability to do that and I can do it with the best of them but there was a part of my brain that was so fed up with all of it that I was like I don't care I don't want to do it anymore I right. don't want to do it I don't I, I'm losing my love for the game I do not want to show up to I don't want to be around these people I don't want to be in the dugout I don't want to be in anything that encompasses anything that has to do with baseball and it's crazy to think about because of all of those aspects that I just described well, this is what you work for your entire life it's what absolutely you love. I've been doing it since I was a little kid yeah. um, this is my I mean I'm literally living out my dream mm -hmm. and there was a part of my brain that just didn't want to do it anymore yeah um, but even more so than that I mean I would after games I would stay up super super late watching TV shows, watching movies, being on my phone, because I knew that as soon as I fell asleep, I was going to have to take on the anxieties of the next day. Yeah. Um, so I would stay up so late after games, forcibly stay up. Yeah. Even though I was so tired, exhausted after games, just because I was so scared about facing on the next day with the anxieties and the pressures of what this game, you know, brings mm -hmm. every single day. Um, and keeping things away from my wife, from the aspect of like my feelings and emotions of those things. Yeah. Um, how I was feeling going through all of the emotions of, you know, just being in the big leagues, going in, you know, day in and night out with the games, um, not talking to my father about a lot of stuff that I, you know, I'm very close to my father, not talking to him about a lot of stuff going on at the field, um, which is a normal, has been a normal routine for me my entire yeah. life since I left uh, for college. Right. Just because, like, I just, I was trying to almost just, push it all away and push it down because I didn't want to deal with it because mm -hmm. I didn't know how to deal with it. And anything that had to do with baseball, I, I had a trigger it in my brain you, yeah. that like made me tense up, like feel so much anxiety for the future, feel so much depression for the past. Mm -hmm. um, and I just didn't want to deal with it. It was making me depressed. It was right. making me just not enjoy what I was doing. Um, and I think the part of me that kind of kept me afloat from the side of getting even deeper than that was I'm a believer in Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, and so my faith and, and understanding that, um, you know, the Lord and uh, is not going to give me anything um, more than I can handle right sure. in, in yep. each individual moment for. So for me being able to, you know, still have that time every single day to get alone with the Lord in my secret place and mm -hmm. um, relying on Holy Spirit to kind of fill me with every single day with what is uh, sufficient for that day yeah. um, was really what kept me afloat enough to where I felt like I didn't get any deeper than that. But still, I didn't know how to deal with the surface of what I just explained. Um, and so it got to that point where when I broke my foot that last time, being a game away from coming back, um, that was kind of like the breaking point for me. I kind of just had a nervous breakdown, and I was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. It's, uh, it's wild to think because, you know, I had a job where I was a sports reporter covering the biggest games from the Super Bowl to, you know, opening day here, which is a huge deal, or big yeah. college games. It's like at LSU where you went to school, and everyone sees it and thinks that you're happy, you're smiling on TV, or you're out here playing, and really you got – you got shit going on that's bothering you and taking you down and people are just like, we don't know. And that's why I wanted to start this project and be able to voice it and give people a, an option to see that not everyone's okay, even if you're at the top of your game and living your dream. Let's fast forward now because you're able to get past the injury, get back to the big leagues. This has to be your happy place. Oh. When, you come, when you come to the ballpark every day and you walk out of this dugout to go to BP, what goes through your head? This is my happy place now. Um... It, it almost it almost brings me to tears um 
because it's again it's it's something that you don't understand how good you have it until it's almost gone mm-hmm. um and i was at a i was i, I was at a point and i mean I, there's a lot of there's very few people that know this other than probably one of my very close friends um he's like a brother to me christianea and probably my wife <clears throat> um that i was i was to the point where i didn't want to do this anymore mm-hmm. i was like i I'd, i i'd much rather do something else um and to look back at that's where i was from a mental you know a mental state to where i am now and this is my happy place now i've found my love for the game again um like i had when i was a little kid when i was in high school when i was in college mm-hmm. um hell even when i was like just got into professional b- baseball right and i don't take it for granted anymore um i'm in a place mentally where i feel like i can show up and be the person that i need to be when i'm here um to be the Jake that I need to be when I step here, you know, into this stadium, to be the competitor, Mm -hmm. you know, competitor Jake, to be, you know, Jake that's going to rip your head off when I step in that box and when I step on that field. Um, And understanding that that person needs to show up every day that I get here so that I do not take this for granted. Um, And in doing that and, and again, have, you know, receiving all the knowledge and all of the tools, right, the mental skill set that I need in order to be that Jake when I'm at the field, um, it has allowed me to kind of uh, embrace again that love that I do have for this game and the passion that I have for this game to play it and to, mm-hmm. to see. Um, one of the things that I said to Brian, he's like, w- w- after I hired him on, he said, what is the one thing that you want to get out of this? And without question, without hesitation, I said, I just want to see how good Jake Fraley can be. I don't want to take it for granted. Mm-hmm. I want to see how good I can be at the big league level because I know I can match up against the best of the best here. Um, I just need help. And uh, and that's where I feel like I'm at now. Well, a lot of respect for, from me and anyone that's struggled, you know, with those ups and downs because it happens to all of us. Um, now that you're here, you got back from that injury, and you played pretty well. I know the team isn't doing as well as you'd hope, obviously, when you get traded over here, wins and losses wise. But personal performance, how have you felt like it's been since you've been back? And you've kind of used obviously both mental and the physical gifts you got now together to have a pretty good second half of the year absolutely yeah i'm i'm have i mean i'm I'm playing how i know i can play um and i'm doing it night in and night out um which is the biggest key right this game is consistency Mm -hmm. um so i feel like i'm at that point i've had a a phenomenal second half um you know i've I've been up there with one of the you know some of the best in the second half right in all baseball so from an offensive standpoint um and that's what i know i can do when i step out on this field and i'm in the right headspace yeah um right um and so it's been a blessing. Um, I've, again, I've been healthy too, so that's obviously a big part. Um, and even getting into that nature, I think health has a big correlation to where your mental, to Absolutely. where you're, you're working you're, out and being ready to go and all that. Yeah. If you are in a bad place mentally, your body reacts to that. Mm-hmm. Um, I honestly believe that it makes your body a little more fragile. Yeah. Um, and so for me, um, you know with how much baseball um, expects from you, um, mm-hmm. you know, the, the stresses that come in from every single game and having to play every single day. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that happen where, you know, you have, you, you look out there on the field tonight and you're gonna have every single player at every position. I guarantee you, if you stop the game and you went around to every single person on that field tonight from both teams, everybody will have multiple things that are hurting or aching them. Oh yeah, yeah. And the biggest and and i again this is something that i believe i don't know if there's any facts or science that backs this up but i truly believe that if you are in the right headspace those little aches and pains stay aches and pains right but if you're not in the right headspace your body will react in a negative way and it's again i think that it becomes more fragile and those aches and pains slowly become very big injuries now granted you have freak things that happen right those are the the, the, the outliers, base, right? The, those exactly. Yeah. Those are the outliers, um, but for the most part, I believe that your mental state, again, going back to the beginning, is the most important. I think it is hands down the most important thing when it comes to elite performance. Well, we had talked about this before we started the podcast. Um, you know, you've tackled the mental game, got better at it, got back on the field. Situation happens in Philly where you and a fan kind of get into it. Can you walk me through? Because a lot of people just see a video of yeah. you and a fan yelling at each other. 
what happened in that situation and how probably were you better able to handle it now knowing what you know about being in the right headspace yeah um so in that moment i mean we you go to all around the country right? i've played in front of fans big and small i've played sure. in front of fans all over the country and especially in professional especially in the big leagues it's the same everywhere on road games you know you everybody heckles you everybody right. has stuff to say about you stuff that i don't want to repeat on here stuff that yeah. you wouldn't even imagine would be said right um crazy stuff yeah sure and you take that all of us take it we've all we've all been there we've all i've heard it all mm -hmm. um even you know talking about my wife it's talking about my sister like you you can i mean i've heard it all i've heard it a million times and and granted for me like those things like say whatever you want like i can keep my head straight now in philadelphia it was the same stuff talking about me uh even got to the point talking about my wife you know whatever keep my head down we'll keep playing the game right um right when that third out was made there was a group of like three four guys down the line in philly that actually brought up stuff about my kids and so as soon as i heard that about my kids that's where I draw the line. Uh, I was like, I don't care who you are. I was more than ready to, to jump over that rail and go yeah. beat the piss out of all four of them. Mm -hmm. And I have no problem saying that, and everybody knows that, and I think I showed that in the video. Um, and from that aspect, when it comes to, like, the mental side of it, I pff, that was all thrown out the door. Yeah. Um, all I saw was red. And, and, again, you can talk about me. You can talk, you, can, hell, you can talk about my wife all you want. But if you talk about my children, you cross the line, right. and I don't care. I don't give a shit what I'm doing at that time. I'll, we're going at it. Right. Um, and, you know, everybody can have their own opinion, whatever, but I think nine times out of ten, anybody that's out there in my position would do the same damn thing. Right, and most people don't know. Well, one, they have no clue. I mean, I get a little bit better insight being able to sit in dugouts or cover, yeah. you know, NFL games, and I get to hear the stuff that gets thrown out of the stands. No one knows what that's like, A, most people watching. Two, they didn't know what the situation was. Someone saying something inappropriate about your kids, which yeah. is just totally out of line. Um, speaking of family, just being able to kind of have them as a backbone, I'm sure, your, your wife, kids, all that. You talked about a close relationship with your dad. How much has that played a role in your life, both on and off the field, when you've been in the big leagues? Yeah, it's huge. Um, you obviously always – want a support system around you right? right so those people are your support system i've i've been blessed by the lord with um an amazing wife um she's my entire world and we've been blessed with two beautiful children um and obviously you know i was blessed with a, a good upbringing with you know my parents mm -hmm. and my brothers and sisters so you know i have that support system around me and it's huge uh this game is tough um, yeah. it's very hard um and to be able to have that support system around you, it's uh, it's a huge difference maker, right? You have a very small window to make this work here in the big leagues. Um, so all the support and help you can get makes a huge difference. I'll get you out of here soon because I know you got to hit BP. Yeah. Get ready for the game. Um, we mentioned support system. Were there guys in this dugout, in the clubhouse, just in the league that, that maybe reached out and mentored you through you know, an, an injury point where they've been through that same stuff, kind of battling the mental game on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, uh, you have, again, it's – unfortunate but it's the side it's the side of sports it's always there it's always going to be there because right. it's such a you know um it's such a physical game uh even you know not obviously there are some sports that are more physical but with yeah. the amount of stress that our bodies have to go through to be able to play every single night for 162 games plus spring training right um a lot of people forget that like we were playing a whole month of spring training right. before we even get to 162 so like by the time you get to like this point in the season where we got like two weeks left, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know your bodies are so broken down. Um, you know it's just part of the game. You can't you can't avoid it. Um, you can try to influence, right, and help yourself in yeah. every way possible. But at the end of the day, it's just part of the game. Um, just like it's a part of every sports. Um, so you know you have guys on every team that have been through you know X, Y, and Z as far as injuries, yeah. um, and you have older guys that have been through quite a bit, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you're always you know you always have those guys on each and every team that are you know have been through you know kind of the whirlwind of injuries and things left and right um, that they've had the experience of getting through and coming back from. So you're always you know you always have good guys like that on the teams that are always coming up to you and giving you a little bit of advice or you know patting you on the back and making you you know understand hey we're here for you right yeah um and just you know simple things like that are huge sure um and so you know there's guys on, on every team like that for you obviously everyone in that clubhouse wants to win more games this team's going to get there we're going to build you can see it already um but just a fun question what's it been like in cincinnati so far do you like it this is one of the best you know 
historical franchises, yeah. the first baseball team ever in the, in the big leagues. What's it been like here in Cincinnati so far? Yeah, it's been a blessing. Me and my family couldn't be more thrilled to be here, um, to have the opportunity to be able to be here and play here. Um, and uh, we've talked about it a lot this year that I, I really hope I have the opportunity to play here for quite a few years. That's how much we love it. Yeah. Um, so we've – we have enjoyed every single aspect of of, uh, of this organization, uh, of the fan base. Um, you know, the moments that I've gotten to be able to see this stadium filled up um, mm -hmm. has been really freaking cool. And and kind of understanding that you know how much of a baseball town this really is. Right. Um, so it's been awesome. And, and you know, we're putting together the pieces. You can, like you said, we can you can see it kind of going on um, a little bit here, a little bit there, as far as getting those pieces put together. And um, I think once all those pieces are together and we start getting out on that field mm -hmm. and start clicking, you, you know, you're going to see Cincinnati baseball the way that you remember Cincinnati baseball. Uh, you got a favorite spot for food yet? Or have you been to the zoo? Like anything stand out? Yeah, so I haven't been to the zoo. My wife and kids have been to the zoo, um, and they – can't stop talking about it. They yeah, said it's, it's incredible. Um, we actually have been to the aquarium across the bridge there. So yep, I was actually going to the aquarium. I liked that. That was awesome. Um, and as far as restaurants wise, um, Soto. Yep. Very good. So we loved Soto. That's probably been our favorite so far. Mm -hmm. um, the short rib was yep. incredible. Uh, so, you know, and again, like I said, I hope I have the opportunity to be able to have yeah. a couple more years, uh, a handful of years, so that we can uh, kind of utilize and, and see the rest of the restaurants in the city. Last thing I'll hit on since we have the LSU connection. One, it's funny to look back at your interviews at LSU because Coach Maneri had the new <laughs> facial hair. So to see you with a full beard is funny to look at. Two, uh, favorite bar in Tigerland? Oh, JL's. JL's, all right. <laughs> see, it kind of shifted. A lot of the younger guys every, say Fred's now. Every year, er, so every kind of set of – you know, three, four years right, of guys that come flux in, it's always a new bar. So they like, had like the wine night or yeah, something. Yeah, they had the wine night. Yeah, See, so. I shouldn't have been going out when I was reporting <laughs> there, but I know it. I, yeah, I was so, a bogey's guy. So, but. yeah, so my three years there, were, JL's was a spot. That was a spot for for the, not only the baseball team, the football team, for everybody. JL's yeah. was packed all week. Yeah. That was a spot. That's awesome, man. I appreciate it. No, I appreciate it. Thank you, you so much. We'll see everybody back here next week on the mental game. And a big thanks to Jake for sitting down with me in the Reds' dugout towards the end of last baseball season for that incredible conversation. As you can tell, he is super passionate about mental health, so I can't thank him enough for coming on The Mental Game. Next week, we have ESPN Sports Center anchor Jay Harris as my next guest, and we had a lot of great things to talk about, including his audition with ESPN. And get this, he didn't even apply. Someone found him, and he didn't want to take the job at ESPN, but since... He has been anchoring Sports Center, and it has been a dream come true. We talked to him about everything you need to know about sports, also his own mental health, his favorite people he's ever interviewed in sports, all of that and much, much more coming up right back here next week on The Mental Game. Mm -hmm.